Owen Patrick Eugene McNulty was born on May 21, 1916, in the Bronx. He sang in the choir of St. Benedict's Cathedral and later in St. Patrick's Cathedral. He graduated second in his class from Manhattan College with hopes of being a lawyer, and he received the Mayor Fiorello H. LaGuardia Vocational Scholarship. He was convinced to try for a career in show business, and he took his grandmother's maiden name for the more professional ring of Dennis Day. In 1939, Kenny Baker, who played the dim-witted tenor on the Jack Benny radio program, was offered his own show and decided to leave the Jack Benny cast. To fill the void, an audition list was drawn up. Benny's wife, Mary Livingston, had heard Dennis Day sing, I Never Knew Heaven Could Speak, a recording given to her, which Day recorded of himself. She had added Day's name to the list. Day was chosen over 100 other singers. This working relationship with Benny would last over 25 years and include radio, television, and several movies, including the 1940 movie hit, Buck Benny Rides Again. He was also a mimic, and he would perform impressions of famous celebrities including Ronald Coleman, Jimmy Durante, and James Stewart. In 1944, Day joined the Navy and entertained the troops for two years. In 1946, while still singing on the Jack Benny radio program, Day was given a show of his own. Then in 1948, the devout Catholic Day married Margaret Ellen Almquist, a film and radio singer. And together... They had 10 children. In the 1950s, 60s, and 70s, Day would be seen on a variety of television shows and heard doing voiceover for animation. His time on television included his own Dennis Day show starting in 1952 and running until 1954. But he would stay with Benny until the final program in 1965. Although 49 years old by then, he was the perpetual youngster, and Benny would still say, That crazy kid drives me nuts. Their last appearance together was in 1970 for a public service announcement. All told, Day is credited with 11 movies and 21 television shows. Day was particular and would refuse roles he thought objectionable. Also, for a period of time, he and his wife had an antique shop, but his fine tenor voice was his trademark all his life. In 1987, he was diagnosed with ALS, known as Lou Gehrig's disease. Day died June 22, 1988, in Bel Air, California. He was survived by his wife, his children, and 13 grandchildren. Day was 72 years old. Information for this biography was taken from John Dunning's The Encyclopedia of Old Time Radio, from the AmericanHistory.com website, from the International Movie Database, and from Wikipedia. For old-time radio researchers, I'm your announcer, Patrick Andre. Thank you for listening.